Good morning, First United Methodist Church, Mesquite, Texas. It is a wonderful Sunday that we're going to have in worship. So glad that you joined us. Wherever you may be across this great world that God created, we want to extend a very special welcome. And you can tell maybe that I'm in a different location. And behind me, you see these beautiful stained glass windows? That's what I've been talking about for the last several months. It's finally complete. The windows are restored, and for 65 some odd years, they had served this church faithfully. Now they will be here for another generation or so. We are so pleased. Hope you get to come by and see what it looks like from the outside. And soon, 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 we will be able to gather inside once again to worship in person. So you may enjoy the windows also. But enjoy this beautiful view. Enjoy the worship service. Let's send a message of peace and love to one another. Send an emoji, a thumbs up, whatever it may be. Let us know that you're worshiping. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let's send signs of love and peace. Thanks. Let's have a great worship. Praise band, it's all yours. one of my favorite all-time songs the days of elijah preparing for the lord the lord is coming again so as we move to a time of prayer let's have in our mind the the mindset of we are always in prayer with god that's that communication that god wants to have with each one of us yes prayer we typically think of as we're bowing or laying down folding our hands bowing our head and we're talking to God, we're sending up prayer requests, we're sending up concerns, but it's also a time to listen. It's also a time to be aware of the Holy Spirit in your life. What is God leading you towards? Where is God working within your life? What does God want you to respond to? 
We do have a few prayer concerns this morning we do want to lift up. Barbara's friend Peter in the UK continues to battle, not the UK, uh, in the Northeast continues to battle COVID. We pray for him that he will, will work through the illness and be back to his regular life soon. We lift up those who are suffering from the disease wherever they are across the world that they find relief. We ask specifically that as school has started back up in various forms and fashions around this country and around our neighborhoods, we pray for each teacher, administrator, counselor, all of those workers to keep them safe. And we pray for the, for the children, whether they're in-person learning, which some of them are, or whether they're doing virtual learning. Our prayers go out to keep them safe as well and for this new virtual learning for them to have an experience that that is a good experience this is all new for everybody so dear god we ask for your presence in the midst of all of these we have a few other prayer concerns that were texted to me this week that remain private but i want you to know that those are being prayed for and that your concerns are heard we have some that are celebrating some good news, homes being built, contracts being executed. Even in this time of pandemic, people are still on the move, and we give thanks and praise that, that life goes on and life continues. Let's have a moment of silent prayer, and then I'll close us with a prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, we have heard your voice. Sometimes we hear your voice loudest when we are the most quiet. Dear God, sometimes we hear your voice in the midst of chaos. Maybe it's family, it's friends, maybe it's work, maybe it's just a social setting, or maybe it's strangers, but the chaos that we find ourselves in. If we listen, we hear your voice. Dear God, you hear these prayer concerns that we have. We lift them to you. For those who need healing, provide that. For those who need comfort, give them rest. Dear God, we've lifted up joys as well. We ask for those joys to be everlasting and shared with others. And dear God, we ask for the scientists, the doctors, the researchers who are working on vaccines, that they have success and they have success quickly. That a vaccine can be developed and administered that can bring us back so that we may be in worship together, one with each other. That we may embrace one another in Christian love and that all the things that separate us can be of those of the past. Dear God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your forgiveness, for we are sinful people. And thank you for sending your Son, our Savior, who died on the cross for each one of us. And it's in all these things that we pray in his name. Amen.
Good morning, First Church. Follow the Lord and honor him. Obey him and keep his commands. Worship him and be faithful to him. Deuteronomy 13.4. This is a translation from the good news. So I have a handful of utensils. Well, not a handful, but a table full of utensils here. Um, I have a pair of tongs. Quite awesome. And those are used to pick up and serve food. I have a, a ladle used to scoop and give soup to people. I have a slotted spoon, and I use that to not get all the soupy stuff because some people don't like soupy stuff. They just like the chunks. And then I have a really awesome fork. Mm, that's not how you use it. It is used to help serve meats, and sometimes you use a knife to do it. So sometimes utensils need something to help them. Some of these utensils actually do a specific job. They are all different. Some are plastic, some are metal, some are pointy, some are dull. They all have one thing in common, and I'm sure you guessed what it is, right? It's to do your homework. No? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, sorry. It's used to serve food. Got it. There we go. So we use those to serve food. We are kind of like these utensils. We all look different on the outside. We all have different talents and abilities, but we all are here to serve God. Use your abilities and talents to serve him in all you do. If you have a talent, use it. Several people in our church use their talents with our service. We have our technology people. We've got music. We've got the pastor who tells us great stories. And then there's me who plays with kids. Miss Claudia, who hangs out with the youth, our new kindergarten teacher who teaches, and Miss Bonnie, who's directing, and Vonda, who runs the entire AK. Oh my goodness. Each one of these people is serving God using their talents. You use your talents. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for our talents and abilities. Help us to recognize that we are all different but are all here to serve you. Amen. And one more thing, at 1230, there will be a surprise on Blast Kids. So get on and look at it. Thanks, Lynn. Now you put those utensils up there, and as soon as you started describing it, I started getting hungry. This is not right. I've got a long time to wait before lunch, but Sorry. great lesson because it ties in so well with our scripture lesson. She read from the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament, we call the Old Testament, and I'm going to read scripture from the New Testament, writings of Paul. And I suspect you can guess what the text is going to be about. The first one's 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 through 7. And this is from the message. I really like how Eugene Peterson uses contemporary language to make the point of the Gospels come alive and the Scriptures to come alive. So here's what Paul is saying to us. What I want to talk about now is the various ways God's Spirit gets worked into our lives. This is complex and often misunderstood, but I want you to be informed and knowledgeable. Remember how you were when you didn't know God, led from one phony God to another, never knowing really what you were doing, just be doing it because everybody else did it. It's different in this life. God wants us to use our intelligence to seek, under, to, to, seek to understand as well as we can. For instance, by using our heads, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God would never prompt anyone to say, Jesus be damned. Nor would anyone be inclined to say, Jesus is master without the insight of the Holy Spirit. God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere, but they all originate in God's Spirit. God's various expressions of power are in action everywhere, but God himself is behind it all. Each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Everyone gets in on it, 
everyone benefits. All kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit and to all kinds of people. The variety is wonderful and incredible. Wise counsel, clear understanding, simple trust, healing the sick, miraculous acts, proclamation, distinguishing between spirits, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All of these gifts have a common origin, but are handed out one by one by the one Spirit of God. God decides who gets what and when. And then from Romans, Paul's letter to the, to the Romans. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what He does for us, not by what we are and what we do for Him. In this way, we are like the various parts of the human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each one of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts in Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something that we're not. If you preach, just preach God's message, nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you do not get bossy. If you're put in charge, do not manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. What if you work with the disadvantaged? Don't let yourself get irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So we're continuing our, our series now on I Love My Church. And let's quickly review what, we are learn, what we've learned so far about loving a church. First thing, be a people of love. When people outside the church look at you and me and they look inside the church and they see something other than a people of love, there's a complete disconnect. We must be a people of love, compassionate, kindness, patience. For example, when I have a bad day and I had a bad day this week and the people that unfortunately were on the, on the receiving end of that bad day Compassion, kindness, and understanding. That's the type of people we are if we love our church. And then we have to be in community with worship, Sunday school, the garden club, the book club. However and whatever gifts or talents or interests you find yourself with, we have to be in community with one another. That's so important. And it's difficult in these times when we cannot be together in the ways that we like, where we can come together in this beautiful sanctuary to worship and praise God. But being in community is part of loving the church. And then last week we talked about being a people who share. We had the virtual BBS, and there were people that recorded and helped on providing that virtual experience to kids throughout the neighborhood. We had the blessing of the devices and the blessing of the backpacks last Sunday. And yes, we had a number of cars come through, and it was hot, very hot. But 
We are a people who share. We share the gifts that God has given each one of us. This church has been very good. We are sharing the monetary gifts that God has been gracious with us for to help others that are in need. We are a church that shares. And so that brings us to this week. We love our church. We love our church by serving. Yeah, we love to serve. And you see how this all fits into that gift discussion that Paul's talking about? So what comes to mind when I say gifts? Maybe you think of a birthday or a Christmas present. That time when a special someone has given you something, and it's a gift. It's all wrapped up, and it's pretty. You're excited about it. It's pardon me, maybe sitting underneath a tree, or it's sitting on the table. It's at a restaurant, and they reach out of their pocket and present it. Those are great times, and what's the first thing you do? The very first thing you do is you open them. You tear into that wrapping and you open that present. So now I want you to hold off on that thought for a minute. And I want you to think about superheroes. Do you like superheroes? Well, I've got my mask right here. And Beth made this mask and it's wonderful. But you're going, okay, what do superheroes and gifts and serving have to do with one another? What do they have to do with First Church? That's the question we need to ask ourselves, and we need to explore the answers as we continue this series of I Love My Church. The implications for the answer are so great, but they're so right in front of us that sometimes we forget that they're there. Superheroes and superpowers. When you were growing up, who was your superhero? Do you have a favorite? I did. Mine was Batman. I love the Batman of the 60s and the early 70s. I'm not so crazy about the Batman of the recent times, the movies and all. I'm not into that. But I like the old Batman. Because I guess coming from an architecture background, and I knew I wanted to be an architect from the day I could spell it. And I got fascinated by the Bat Cave. And there's the Wayne Manor above it, how they got from that room down to the Bat Cave. I started thinking through as, a, as a, a boy would do, trying to figure out how that worked. What did it look like? So I decided to go out in the backyard one day and I started digging. I dug this deep, deep hole, at least for a nine-year-old, eight-year-old is a deep hole. And then I tunneled. I tunneled into the next door neighbor's yard underneath the chain link fence. And I tried to recreate the Wayne Manor on top. And I wanted to be Batman, so I would dive into that hole and crawl underneath the tunnel and come up on the other side thinking I was in the Bat Cave. Man, it was so cool. But I also liked the belt, the Bat Belt that he had, all the gadgets that were on it. That fascinated me. What he could do with those things. And one, how could he wear some of that stuff and then bend over without you know, slicing his belly open. I, I couldn't figure that part out. But it was great. That was my superhero. And superhero also has a way of not taking credit for being a superhero. Now, you can say it's all kid stuff, and yes, it is. But millions of dollars have been made off of superhero things. Over the last few years, the film industry has made almost a billion dollars on the superhero franchisees that are out there now. So I looked up the definition of superhero in Webster's. It says, a fictional hero having extraordinary or superhuman powers, an exceptionally skillful or successful person. Now, I'm not going to criticize the dictionary on their ability to create definitions, but I don't think that one's quite correct. For you see, it's not inaccurate, it's just incomplete. Superheroes are more than extraordinary, superpowered, exceptionally skilled people. That's not even half of what it makes who they are. They're superheroes because they utilize the abilities within a specific context to help in a very specific way. Now think about that, the superhero uses his or her ability in a very specific context 
to help in a very specific way. That's what a superhero is. Having superpowers is one thing, but it takes action to make one a hero. Just imagine if Batman was in the Wayne Manor, saw the cloud with the bat symbol on it, dove in or slid, however he got to the bat cave, got in the Batmobile, and then just decided, you know, I just really don't feel like it today. I, I, I don't think I'm going to go put it into action. He would not be a superhero. Superheroes have to put it into action. So you're going, how does this all fit in with a Sunday message? Fits in because each one of you and me, we are superheroes for God. That's right. God made you and made me, made our tech team, made our praise band, made every single one of us to be a superhero. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be famous or you're going to have a cartoon series or a film franchise named after you. But I can guarantee you this, that when you understand that you have a super ability, God-given power, you can make a difference. So, you have superpowers. 1 Corinthians 12 talks about that. And he's talking about spiritual gifts. Those are our superpowers today. The spiritual gifts that each one of us is given. So there's a slide up there, the next one, that says that I wanted to zoom in on. God works all things in all persons, meaning that God empowers gifts in all of his followers. So what gift has God given you? Do you know the gift God's given you? Now, some of you, I know for a fact, know exactly the gift, the spiritual gifts given you. It's a Holy Spirit-empowered ability to serve others. A spiritual superpower given for you to use in a specific context to help in a specific way. So here's a list. And the slide up there will have the list of the spiritual gifts. There's 20 of them that are listed on this slide. Could be exhortation. Could be giving, leadership, mercy, service, teaching. And right there, so many of us, as we go back to school now, have teaching as a spiritual gift. I've seen spiritual gifts in each one of you over the years and how you have used that. Pardon me, use that gift. But there's two really important things that I want you to remember about the spiritual gifts. God is the one who picked yours. God is the one who said, I am gifting you this gift. It's not something you selected out of a catalog. It's not something you went on the internet and said, hey, I think I'd like to have this spiritual gift. No. No. Paul says in Romans, we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us. That grace given by God and only God. It's important that we realize we did not apply, we did not request, we did not select the spiritual gift that God has for each one of us. God knows what is best for you and for me in terms of our gifts. The second one It is a spirit-empowered gift. When you hear that list of spiritual gifts, you might be doing proverbial scratching the head. said, I had some really good teachers in my life, and some of them did not love God. They were not Christians. How could they be a good teacher if, if they were not given the gift of teaching? That's a great question. And here's the response to that question. The thing to realize is that There are a lot of really good teachers out there. There's some amazing, incredible teachers doing a fantastic job. But there's a difference between great teaching and teaching that's empowered by God's Spirit. There is a significant difference. One is exhibiting their natural talent. Talent, they've gone to school, they've been educated, they've done professional development, and they're using that talent of teaching and that's also God given but the other is exhibiting an ability infused by the power of God to speak in such a way that surpasses the mere talent that they have one teaching with spiritual gifts 
does so while being led by the Spirit, guided by that Spirit, of having the words to say and the ways to communicate in the environment in which they're placed, that people can see and sense that God is within their life, that there's something beyond that teaching that is God-inspired. So there's an example, Mike Tyson, the professional boxer, he's now retired, but throws quite a punch. And it's going to be powerful and you know it's going to hurt. Even more so if it was thrown during his prime. Wouldn't stand a chance. That's his natural talent. But when Superman throws a punch, it's going to hurt way more. There's a more than a natural going on. There's something supernatural happening in that punch that Superman's going to throw. Or that punch that Batman's going to throw. And you're going to hear on the screen, pow, whammy, boom. I love those two on the Batman cartoons. There's many great leaders throughout history, but someone leading with the gift of leadership is exhibiting something extraordinary and supernatural. You and I have been given an amazing gift to be used by God. That's incredibly exciting. But it can also be the natural question, are, what are my gifts? You may think, I, yeah, I don't know what my gift is. I know what my talent is, but what are my gifts? There's three ways I think we can experience and figure out what our gifts are. First of all, Experiment in serving. Yeah, it's really easy. Get involved in your church. Get involved in doing something by serving others. What are some of the specific ways you can get involved? Try out a ministry for a month. Try it out. See how it fits. See if it's something that you like doing. Ask whoever else is involved in that leadership or that ministry of how they think you fit in with it. Try serving. Try different things. If one or both of you feel it's just not your area, don't be discouraged. Move on. Try a different ministry. There are so many ministries within First Church that we need to be engaged with. Every single person, regardless of their age, regardless of their natural ability or talent, can be part of. I think the greatest shame is when we sit here and listen and we worship and we praise, but that's the end of the story. We must serve using those talents. So here's the second one. Ask other people. You've all got friends. That's a slide up there that says, ask other people about what they think your spiritual gift is. They'll have an idea. They will have a clue as to what they think your gift is. You'd be amazed if you're honest with people. People will be honest with you. You can sit back and say, is this one of my spiritual gifts? Have you discovered that in me or seen that in me? Don't be discouraged if they say, frankly, no. Then do something else. But also, don't be surprised if that other group, that leader, or those other people you're serving with say, yeah, since you come into this ministry, something different has happened. God has inspired through you this ministry to go on to new and better and higher things. It's much more effective. Then the third thing is, and this is a really good one, is are you tired? Check out your energy level. If you're in a ministry and you're assessing whether that's a spiritual gift that serves that ministry, step back and see, am I tired? Now, we all get tired. We all get a little burnt out sometimes, and I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking when you're in the midst of serving and you're in that particular ministry, what's your energy level like? How's it going? Are you excited about the next opportunity? Now, it may not be the next opportunity if it's day after tomorrow, because I need some rest. But if you're excited about, you know, we did this this month, we served these neighbors this month, 
I'm excited about what we may be able to do next month, then that tells you that there may be a spiritual gift within that ministry. Check your energy level. But then you also have a superpower team behind you. This church, First Church, Mesquite, Texas, you have a team behind you. It's like the Avenger movies that are out these days. The Avengers by themselves really can't do anything, but as a team, they can do almost everything. You are not called for your spiritual gift to go out solo. Now, some may, but the vast majority of the spiritual gifts you're going to use in the context of serving with other people from this church. There is a team that's behind you. Your gift was not given to you, but your gift was given for you. As you team up with other people, you can make a difference because you're using that gift. So, as we look at the type of power that you have, you, my friend, have superpowers. You, my friends, have a wonderful opportunity to impact the world for God. Use the gifts God's given you. Put them into practice. And as we love God, love our neighbor, and serve this community, it will be an amazing thing that will happen. In the midst of this separation, this pandemic, each one of us should be exploring deeply where God is calling us to serve. For when we serve, that's when we love our church. My friends, I want to see all of our gifts utilized to their fullest. For that's why God gave them to us. It's in the name of the Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. So, as we turn now to Holy Communion, let's take this opportunity and open ourselves up to the power of the Holy Spirit. This is a sacred time. This is a sacrament, one of two in the United Methodist Church. So as you get your elements together, open yourself up to the power and the mystery that Holy Communion can and will be for you. And we know that this is the Lord's table, not First United Methodist Church's table. This is God's table. It's open to all people. It's open to those people who are really struggling with, is there even a God? Maybe there's been so much hurt in your life, you question. That's okay. God invites you to his table. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We fail to be an obedient church. We've not done your will. We have broken your law. We've rebelled against your love. We've not loved our neighbors. And we've not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give our thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image, breathed into us the breath of life, and gave each one of us gifts. When we turned away and our love failed and we did not use the gifts for your purposes, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and grape juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the people of faith, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many become one body. The body that Christ broke so that we may have wholeness. The grape juice that is the blood of Christ, symbolizing for us the blood shed for Christ for the forgiveness of sins. Take, eat, and drink in remembrance of him. The body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Thanks be to God. We continue our communion and the praise team will sing, be in prayer, be aware. Christ's name, amen.
enjoyed that song, Dwell in Me. There's an example of a spiritual gift being put into practice. For our very own Gary wrote that. Composed it, wrote it. I guess you did all the words and everything. The whole, the whole, I, I, yeah, the whole, the whole shebang. But what a wonderful expression of using a gift as well as a talent. Putting it in practice. Serving because it's helping lead worship. We have the opportunity to continue serving our neighbor, our community, and praising God with our tithes, our gifts, and our offering. There is so much still going on in the life of First Church. Lynn said about the pre-K or the, the kindergarten, the private kindergarten, that program is educating young children in a Christian manner. And Amy's doing a great job teaching. Finished the first week and she's still alive. I don't know how she does it, but she is practicing teaching with that supernatural God-given gift. Bonnie leading the program. Vonda, Lynn went over all the... But there's so many programs that are impacting lives on a daily basis that this place, First Church, is serving and worshiping a living God. No matter how you give, whether it's by text, the uh, abundant giving app, sending a check, dropping off cash, that is an act of worship. What you do with the gifts that God has given you is an act of worship. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your continued support. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray that these gifts that are given, that indeed your power may be on them so that the work that is enabled by them will lead people closer to you. You've given each one of us such an opportunity to impact lives. Dear God, help us be your hands and feet during these difficult, difficult days. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Love is everlasting, 
Amen. Your love is everlasting. Well, the announcements that we have today are very, very short. We have the telephone call-in service. There is a 972 local number that you may dial anytime starting about 2 o'clock this afternoon, and you will hear the entire worship service. We're still sort of in the beta testing phase of it. Last week was the first week, and there were some volume issues we're working on. But please let your friends, let those who have no internet connection especially, let them know about that, a way we can still connect with each other. That's so vital. Angela did a great brochure ta talking about the, the telephone call-in service, and each member of our church that we know does not have internet should have gotten that brochure this week. So I encourage people to tune in for that. So as we go out into this week, my friends, be in prayerful consideration asking the gifts God has given you. For you are a superhero and you have superpower given by God to make this world a better place and to make the kingdom of God come to be. Yes, it's hard work. But remember, God has made you a superpower and a superhero. Hear now this blessing as we go forth in peace. May the power of the Holy Spirit dwell within us. May we understand and learn the gifts God has given each one of us. May we utilize those gifts. May we reach out to the community and to our neighbors to make a difference for Christ. Dear God, thank you for all that you have done. Watch over us this week and bring us back together next week as we praise your name. In Christ's name, amen. securely high.